Um, I just wanted to tell you about my experiences on the streets and uh, as a rent boy. Last November, um, I realised how quite lonely it was and I couldn't take it, you know. And so I decided to put the radio on. I didn't want music, I just wanted to hear someone's alive, someone's alive. Well, the reason I'm up this time in the morning, I haven't had a decent night's sleep for the past ten years. I rarely get to sleep before six, even with the help of sleeping pills. And uh, here's London's weather forecast now for the night. The rest of the night will be dry with clear periods, but there'll be a freezing fog in the outer suburbs by the morning. And the rest of Saturday mostly dry with sunny spells after the clearance of early fog. But there may be one or two light snow showers later on in the day. Will be uh, The day's high, 3 centigrade, 37 Fahrenheit. And now... Live on LBC, this is the Clive Ball Through the Night Show. What's your business tonight then, Clive? Tonight, calls on the topic of your choice, and I particularly want to hear about some of your nighttime habits tonight. We have Ray and Jan live from Rayleigh with your organ requests and an extra session uh, with them because it's a different day and this is because we've had to skip a couple of uh, sessions with them because of our golf coverage. So Ray and Jan a bit later on as well and the number to call is 071-973-9733. John in Crawley Down, good morning. Morning. Uh, See you tonight. Hello, John. Have you received uh, a little gift? Certainly have. Oh, have you? Very is impressive. Suitable, is it? For Excellent. Your... Did you weave it yourself? Oh, yes. yes. It's, it's a marvellous job you've done there. Oh, yes. Look, it's Pat. Yes. 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 So, you know, instead of okay, hold on, please. Yeah. That's right. The one that Paula <laughs> keeps on, kicking. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, have to be careful with that one. Well, you? yes, yes. At least it'll make a better noise. About a year and a half ago, I was up one night. I just happened to be listening. And uh, it's continued from there. Hello. The night. The night. Yes, well, I'm up. What on earth are you doing up at this time? You're keeping me here. Why? You're keeping me up. You're home then. I listen normally to Saturday yeah. evenings and Sunday evenings. Time goes very quickly. Uh, works out at uh, about 10 to 12 hours. Um, not too sure exactly how long he's on for, but um, it's basically about that. He sometimes, you know, does off in the middle, but uh, on the whole, I try and listen t continuously. Five. Well, quite. It's going yes. incredibly quickly at this it time of day. It does speed past, doesn't it? It does. And then all have you got huge bags under your eyes? Um, well, nobody's ever commented that I no? have. Oh, no? No. Right. But right. then sometimes, on Mondays, they only have about two hours sleep. Mm. But nobody said anything. Do you cope with that? Uh, it doesn't affect me that much. It catches up a bit on Tuesday. So is it an active choice to stay up this late, then, do you think? Yes, yes. Well, I usually sleep the whole of um, Saturday afternoon. So, uh, Saturday night, she gets up, listen to Clive, and uh, Sunday just rolls into Monday. I've done programmes before that are uh, a bit more conventional, like gardening and do-it-yourself phone-ins, which are not terribly stretching for the presenter. They are for the gardening expert, but not awfully for the uh, presenter. So... Uh, this slot came up in, in the middle of the night at the weekend and it sounded attractive to me, mainly because there was nothing set down to do and uh, gradually it, it developed into an out-and-out -out phone-in. No, I, I wanted to tell you why I'm, I'm up. But, this time okay. I'm, I am a digital program, as you know. I used to think I was crazy before I became a digital but I'm sure now I'm... Right. And why do you uh, do you stay up this late then? Wouldn't, wouldn't you rather be in bed asleep? No, anything can happen on your program, as I've said. I think he's a friend. If I've got some problem, he will sit there and listen. And uh, he does seem to care about his callers. serious as well at times. Yes. Well, that's nice of you to say so, George. Generally, I don't visualise the callers because I'm thinking a bit too much about what they're saying. But you pick up little things, and I suppose you, you gradually... Uh, put a picture to some of the, the regular names. We do share Michael, I, it's very hard to tell. The main thing I know is that he's a greengrocer. 
and he's a Londoner, but visually, to be honest, I don't have a picture of him. Okay, Clive? Yes. Where we go? Off you go, Jim. Pull up back in here, Clive. I've been going to Spitalfields for about four and a half years. I don't enjoy it, but uh, that's life, isn't it? You've just got to work hard and earn. Uh, I'm not only a first-time caller, but I'm a first-time listener, too. Oh, well done. Yes, um, circumstances caused me to listen, and um, I'm, I'm laying yeah. in bed with my mother. Thanks. Um, Are you? So <laughs> Why? <laughs> Dave, got a banana for us? We are quite much for it. Cheers. Can I take it? Is um, your mother there? Pardon? Is your mother there? My mother's here, yes, listening. What's her name? Uh, Gladys. Hello, Gladys. Clive says hello, Gladys. What's the price of courgettes? Yeah, over there. Yeah. Three pounds. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Clive. Thank you. Nice do call from. again. Paula, do you want to bring it in? Look at this. Well, we have to be a bit careful with packages arriving at the moment. Let's, right let's have a look. Me. What is it? Oh, yes. It's fruit. It's is, is there a note? Is. What's that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I send him down some fruit every so often. Clive seems to appreciate it. It's usually um, fruits either that's, well, I'm not going to say I don't need, but it's just uh, sold at the end of the week. You had a good week. You don't mind. If it helps the program along a bit, so I don't mind at all. Yeah, why should we lose it? How about in the control room? Um, who is it from? Is there a note here? Oh, yeah. yes, here we are. Look. Michael of Stanford Hill. Oh, well, he's a greengrocer. Oh, he's, he's got a dream just like he treats all the other callers. It could um, be a miniature. What he thinks back at home with me, I have no idea. Uh, right. Well, anyway, thank you very much, Michael. Keep us on for tomorrow, will you? Cheers. Right. Okay, I'll see you, Dave. He's a friend of the programme in uh, oh. the respect that he, he sends in his fruit and things like that, and he phones in from time to time. But no, I, I don't think I'd know him from Adam uh, on the street. He, he's just a contributor to the programme. Here you go. Uh, bunch no, away, no, so we'll, we'll be all right. Huh? No, no, you didn't see anyway. Jane in Clapham. Hello, Jane. I thought you had some of the bagels. I know. It's lovely. I, I thought it was going to be bagels, but it was fruit. It was fruit. It's fruit. <laughs> The lines are open now till 6am for you to call in when you feel the urge on 071-973-9733. Weekend through the night. Vicky in Swiss Cottage. Hello, Vicky. Hello, Clive. Hello. Um, I wanted to talk about um, people's attitude towards homeless people. Yeah. It was last July, um, day before my 17th birthday, mm. um, I was kicked out of home. And I came straight up to London and was sort of living on the street for about six weeks. If people sort of knew sort of what went out on the streets and how bad and rough it was, that they really have a different attitude towards it. I mean, I got attacked yeah. twice. <laughs> And there's still time to get through if you're quick. We've got Ray and Jan there with uh, live organ requests as well. And on LBC, it's Grace in Camden. Hi, Clive. Hi, Grace. What are you doing up at this time of night? What are you doing up at this time of I'm night? I'm being extremely naughty. For sake. Actually, this is even later than usual for you, isn't it? Yes, it is, but I've been um, doing bits and pieces. You oh. know the time just flies by. Doesn't it just? When you're yes. having such fun. Yes, doing the hoovering and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> exactly, and yes. eating a lot, you know. Are you going to get any sleep before you have to get up? Yes, probably, because the great thing is that the schools are shut tomorrow. Grace is an interesting one. She sounds... I mean, she's obviously Scottish. I mean, there's no denying that. And she sounds like she's very bright and lively, and she sounds young. I don't know whether she is. You can't tell age over the radio. Um, but I have a feeling that she's probably... I think she mentioned something about a, being a single mum. You get little bits of information, and you try and put them together. She said something about being on a, a diet to put on a lot of weight. So I assume maybe she's very thin, but then that could be a brilliant cover for somebody who is, in fact, enormous. If you stay up late enough just to see the dawn coming up, to see the next day's in, 
and then you can go to bed after that, you know, and you, you've been up before everybody else. Yes, well, there, there is something a little bit naughty and much nicer about staying up late, isn't there, as That's opposed right. to getting up early. That's right. I'm awake through the night because during the day there's things to be done. Um, I have to look after my son. And at night, once all the housework is done and I've got time for myself, that's when I can really relax and just listen to the radio. Um, it's just getting the chance of a few extra hours to yourself. So the question to you that I've asked everybody else as well, I mean, w would you rather be asleep right now? No, certainly not. I've got enough of that during the week. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. Thank you, Grace in Camden. You're tuned into LBC. Ha ha he he. It's through the night, live with Clive. When practically anything goes, as every listener knows. Michael, coming up in another pair in Stanford Hill. Hello, good morning. Hello, to you. Michael. Uh, should I explain to you some of those fruits? I wish you would, yes. Right. Good idea. Now, what about this? We're at the Granby uh, Grill, which is a, a shelter exclusively for taxi drivers, where during some time they're during their working shift, they can come in here and get a meal, a breakfast, dinner, tea, anything. That is a grenadilla. I usually take my um, my food out. I don't often sit in here because it's not... not um, I don't know, I just feel awkward being the only woman in here at night time anyway. Now, this is a star fruit, is it? Yes, uh, that's the star fruit. Tastes awful and... Uh, Look great, but taste awful. Good. Yeah, what have I got I mean, now in my hands, Felicia? Is it a piece of fruit? Yes, it is, yes. It's Guess the Fruit. What uh, do you think? Could it be a grenadilla? No, it's no, you're close. About orange. three inches away. No, it's not an orange. We'll give you one more guess. Come on now, guess the fruit. A you always get these, don't you? No, it's not. No, well, after working for driving four years in the traffic during the day, it really, really put me off. So I thought I would give nights a go. And I think London's particularly beautiful at night anyway. I've just got this thing about it. Night, I think I'm one of those people. Yes. Yes, I, th I, I think I am. You do a wonderful show and it's entertaining. And, uh... It's surprising just how many people are up at night as well. Who are not necessarily listening to us, but they're out there. So your biorhythms are nighttime I'm ones. Very much of a, of a night owl sort yeah. of person, more alert at night. Very bad in the mornings and late afternoons. Now you had a request. Yes, I do actually. What do you want to hear? I'd love to hear Jan play "Over the Rainbow." Over the rainbow. What do you think, Ray? Somewhere over the rainbow. No problem, Clive. Okay, off we go then. Felicia. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you. Pop back Goodbye. to the radio. Off we go. Bye. Right, okay, Jen. Yes. Where you go, love? Okay. Was there anybody out there who could uh, sing or do an instrumental thing? And uh, we'd just come in. Jan had just finished a gig, and we'd just come in and had a coffee. And uh, Jan heard that, and I heard it, and she looked at me, and I said, well, go on then, girl. Get on the phone and, and play for him. So she did, and she played Beautiful Sunday. And uh, Seemed to be a lot of fun. A lot of people liked it. Well, I see, he said, there's a lot of happiness. A lady had lost her dog. Yes, and she was, lost Yes, dog, and she was upset about it. Mm. And uh, it sort of upset me a bit, too. And when he said, oh, dear, he said, you know, it would be nice if we could have some music and mm. perhaps brighten yeah, things up. Like it gives Jane a lot of pleasure. I get pleasure from it. I like to hear the people, their response. There's so many lovely characters there. There are so many 
many thousands out there listening, as opposed to three hundred, perhaps, or, or even less. You know, it's so many people out there. Yes, I didn't realise the organ would sound as well as it does. Apparently, because we've right. never heard it the other side. Yes. And people have said, you know, it's how it sounds very good, haven't they? Yes, right. Yes, if yeah. we've never actually heard yeah, a broadcast, heard it. which we're holding yeah. the telephone. <laughs> Camden, hello. Good morning, Clive. Good morning. Um, I'd like, I uh, well, I'd like to try the mystery noise, please. Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, have, oh, hang on a minute. What do you think that is? <laughs> uh, sounds like you're doing your washing with a scrubber board. It, it does, doesn't it? Yes. And funnily enough, that's not so far away from the truth. But sadly. Not right, oh, Julie. Isn't it? Never mind. Uh, well, um, here we are I, then. Yes, I thought I would phone you this morning. Yes. Um, do you remember I phoned you last week when you asked about people being up through the night? Yes. Yes, well, I'm still up. Yeah, you, I don't know if I've been I made awake it, a long time. I know, I know. It's I don't know if I made it clear last time that although I'm out, I actually live in Stevenage. Why are you in Camden now? Uh, because I've just dropped somebody off. Oh, yes. You are the woman taxi driver, That's aren't right. you? Yeah. And how many of there are you again? Uh, between 70 and 80, I think. 70 and 80. Okay, guess my fruit. A grape. No, it's bigger than a grape. Right sort of colour. Guess the fruit. A plum. No, it's not working, is it? Let me try a bit of telepathy here. Uh, is it a star fruit? That's incredible. A star fruit. It oh. works, doesn't it? I thought I was telepathic, you know. Some people, I think, are a little bit probably phoning because they like the sound of their own voice. Um, some people have got nothing to say, and that is exactly how it comes over. Um, a lot of people sound very lonely, as if they rely on his nighttime show to keep them company, which I think is a good thing. Um, you do need programmes like that, particularly for the old elderly people who can't sleep. Charles in Camden, good morning. Uh, hello, Clive. I'm very much under the weather. I'm wearing a beret, you know, it's holding my head together, I've got a head cold, you know, a cold in the head. Uh, it's just developing. By about Tuesday or Wednesday I shall have a, a literally a fat head. But uh, I've had these before and they take their course, so I'm doing a bit of inhaling, you know, and <laughs> anyway, Clive, I'm very happy to be with you again. I'd like to sing you, well, sing, uh, whatever you'd like to call it. Very much no, we'll go for on, on the London scene, put it that way. Right. But uh, I, I do want to bring back some of the old Stephen Foster songs. Yeah. Gone is the romance that was so divine, tis broken and cannot be mended. You must go your way and I must go mine. Now that our romance has ended, what'll I do when you are far away and I am blue? What'll I do? When I lost a lady friend after a very, very close relationship of 15 years, I like to think there were no two people ever closer. And then, no stranger to bereavements. Usually, I've just shut up for about three months. I've sort of gone into mourning, but, but this was different. I had my first song on the radio on the last Sunday that my dear friend Claire was on earth. And she said, that's very good. You must keep that up. 
and one little short one. I'm forever blowing bubbles, pretty bubbles in the air. They fly so high, nearly reach the sky. That's where my dreams all fade and die. The singing, well, singing, if you can call it singing, it gives me room for self-expression. Especially the first, the first month, the first six weeks or so, when I lost my dear friend, it, it, gave, me, it gave me a way of singing out, as I said, my grief and sorrow. But not only that, I was so astonished by people that called me to commiserate with me. When London sleeps and all its lights are gleaming, millions of its people softly there are sleeping. Some have no home while others watch are keeping. Quiet reigns in that great domain when London's Fast asleep. Hope I don't put you to sleep. What passes for his singing is is something that you you couldn't create if you tried. I mean, Charles, I think, is a, is a marvelous contributor to the program, and he's as far as what he looks like. Um, what does Charles look like? He's, he's he's got that kind of doddery voice that I assume. Maybe just because it's a stereotype. I, I think of him as a bit like a kind of the Arnold Ridley character in Dad's Army. You know, the, uh, the, the man who played Godfrey. It's a slightly sort of doddery old chap, but, but with a heart of gold. Well, hopefully I'll speak to you again maybe Monday morning. All right. As usual. Yes, look forward to lovely, that. Lovely, lovely. Lovely. Thank you, Love Charles. Love everyone. Thank you. And, and as I said, I wish everybody well. Love to the whole human family the whole human f- yes yeah. thank you Charles yeah. bye bye oh before bye you go Charles yeah uh, oh is he gone hello Charles yes yeah. I was going to say oh, bef- yeah. good yeah I was going to say why are you up at this uh, particular time of the night because this is one of our topics tonight I mean hello well this has become part of my life uh, part of my scene hello. Charles thank you thank you Clive we'll talk to you soon I've been around a long time yes it's alright yeah. thank you <laughs> cheerio Charles bye bye now bye I've been around a long time, Yes, you know. it's all right. Thank you. <laughs> Cheerio, Charles. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, Barbara. I wanted to say about my favourite tune. Yeah. And what's brought all this on, then? You do become part of that nighttime community, and it is a different world. It's almost a privilege that, that you're up and you can be saying all these things, almost behind the other people's backs who are, who are foolish enough to be asleep. You put me to sleep. Well, it hasn't worked so far, has it? People often do say to me, oh, it, don't you feel a bit sort of claustrophobic or weighed down by the fact that uh, there are some people who are, are dependent on you? I know there probably is a small minority who are dependent on overnight radio, but I don't think they're dependent on me. They're just dependent on on the programme. And if I wasn't there, somebody else would be. Dependent? No, no, not dependent. Um, enjoyable? Yes, uh, not dependent. I mean, in the worst case, I could live without it. For two. One is, um, when I take my sugar to tea... Hello? Hello? Yeah, I get a gen nose that. How about deep purple? Oh, well. That sounds a bit better, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, all right. Deep purple, short right. Go back to the radio, have a listen, and here we go then. Ray and Jan.
Alright, Clive. Thank you. Righty-ho.